So my name is Walter Peters and you're here at the Naked Trading Webinar. Congratulations, you made it. We're going to talk today about consolidation trading, which is pretty fun actually, as it turns out. And I'm going to share with you five different ways to trade without indicators uh, consolidating markets. So how does that sound? Pretty good? Let's go. So you can... You can uh, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, okay, cool. All good. Hey, Andre, great great to have you here. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into the material and I'm gonna show you some live examples. If you have any questions about the live markets from a naked point of view, we'll definitely tackle those as well at the end of today's session. So thanks a lot for spending, for spending time here. I'm Walter, full-time trader, author of the book Naked Forex, and we're gonna get into five consolidation strategies here. So number one, um, I'm going to bring up the, these are all six hour charts. Uh, it works on any time frame. I'm just showing you on the six hour charts because I think, uh, it's easy to see these on the six hour charts as the markets look today. It's not always the case, but today, uh, six hour charts are pretty ripe. So let's talk about what you have here. What we have up here on the CAD Swiss six hour chart is an area of resistance up here and an area of course down here where we, we have a bit of support now um, what's interesting about this is there's also a very clear midpoint now we're going to talk more about midpoints when we get into consolidation boxes which is another way of, of looking at a consolidating market is to just draw a draw a box around it right it doesn't have to be a box but it often is a box you can also draw channels or flags or, or whatever you, or, you know, triangles or wind socks or whatever you want to call. But I think a lot of times um, boxes are the easiest ways to see it. The reason why I prefer horizontal support and resistance to trend lines, I do use trend lines and I use channels and all that. But um, the thing about the horizontal levels is more people will see them. So I think that they have a lot of uh, importance in the markets because it's so easy for so many people to see that this is a level. And so it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? So that's why horizontal levels for me are always going to be my first go-to. If, if I can make sense of the markets from a horizontal um, support and resistance point of view, I'm going to go with that. All right, so the first one I want to share with you is... Um, is where you wait for the market to get up to um, one edge of the box or the other and print a signal okay so I want to point out that um, the CAD Swiss was in this box it, it found the floor here it found it again there which by the way is all we really need we only really need two touches here um, to to uh, create the floor it, it found it again and it got really wicky. You can see the buyers came in again, but then it fell out. And when it came back up here, it was looking like it was gonna push off of it with this nice long tailed wick here, but it actually hopped back up into the box. So this is what we would call a false breakout. It actually didn't offer a, well, actually maybe it would have. For some traders, this would have been a last kiss trade and it would have been a loser, a, approximately on this candle right here. So um, it would have been a last kiss loser. However, the good news is a couple of things um, are we have going for this chart. Number Thing number one is that if you look at the CAD Swiss on the open position ratios, you're gonna notice something here. 69% of our retail traders are currently long the CAD Swiss. This bodes well for shorts. In other words, when a, a large number of our retail trading buddies are all on one side, it usually means you want to be on the other side. And sometimes it even means it's trending against the retail crowd because they're always trying to pick bottoms and tops. So because this is the case, with the CAD Swiss, and because the CAD Swiss is in a box here, not actually trending really hard, what I would look for up at this upper level and maybe we'll get one this week or maybe maybe even next week, is a touch at 75, which is where the top of this, the edge of this, this box is, and like a kangaroo tail or a big shadow. So here's a kangaroo tail right here. That's what those look like. Um, and this is what a big shadow looks like, actually. 
Big Shadow looks like this. Big Shadow has a higher high, a lower low, completely engulfs the prior candle, and it's an on, on an area of support and resistance, and the next couple of candles go lower. Uh, kangaroo Tail, open, open and close, is in the bottom third for a bearish one here. Um, oftentimes, the tail will extend beyond the support and resistance level. And then within the next two candles, you see the market trade lower, which of course is the case here as well. So either of these signals, when the market gets back up here to 75, would be great. So that's the first way to pay, play consolidation. Now, I will let you in on the way that I trade them. What I found to be useful, uh, and this has been a lot of trial and error really, has been that I, I don't really like, um, I used to trade high, high, high win rates and low reward risk ratio. The issue with that is that you need to be really on your game. If you get sloppy even just a little bit, it, it can eat into your profits enough that you may actually go negative and not have a profitable strategy. The other thing is if your broker starts slipping you, which I haven't found a broker that doesn't, if you if you can find me a broker that doesn't slip you when you start making money, um, let me know. Because <laughs> they all, they all um, have their ways, right? Um, so, which is part of the game. But one of the things uh, that's that's tricky when you're trading such a, a low reward risk ratio strategy is when you get, start to get slipped, guess what? You actually end up with, with a big chunk of your profit is now gone. And I'll give you an example of this. We used to trade a strategy like a grid trading strategy, my friends and I, where we were going for, I think it was every three pips, we would take a new trade and then every um, three pips we'd get out. So we were playing these uh, three three pip grids and we had options to cover the downside risk. And what ended up happening was the broker started slipping me, you know, after the first month, like a half a pip. And then it was a full pip or, or 0.9, you know, nine pipettes or whatever. And it ended up being to the point where like the strategy just wasn't going to work anymore because I was losing about a third of my profit um, by getting slipped on my entries. And so, and, and I mean, that's an extreme example when you have a three pip target, but the same thing happens when you have like a 10 pip or 20 pip target. So if you're going for really high reward risk ratio or really high win rate and really low reward risk ratio, just be aware that you need two things to do this. You need a really good broker who's basically happy to make commissions just on the round trip, you know, like a, like a stock broker. And you also need to have a really good execution, which usually means you're mentally sharp and you're physically sharp. So you're very physically active. You're, you're on top of your game. You're getting enough sleep, all that sort of stuff so that you don't screw up basically. So um, what I like to do is I like to go for three, a minimum of three R. So if I get a kangaroo tail up here, for example, and it looks something like this and I've got you know 25 pips of risk, I want to see if I can get 75 pips out of it, which I, I could in this case. If I got out at the bottom here, I could get 75 pips out of, out of that trade. So that's what I would looking be looking for for a bare minimum. So that's number one. Thing number one is to trade um, clear, you know, bottom, double bottoms, double tops. Um, and, and remember, I, I said the open position ratio actually shows me that I would want to be on the sell side for the CAD Swiss. So this is a really good tool because, you know, chances are, as I see it, I'm not too worried about a breakout beyond the box. Now, I still might get stopped out. It might spike me really hard and stop me out, but I, I think it's less likely that I will see a, an upside breakout and more likely that it'll fall back down to the bottom of the box because I know what my open position ratios are and I've got, I've got this at my back. So that's why I like to do it that way. Trade inside the box using a really clear uh, setup, a naked trading setup, and using the open position ratios to pick your direction. Where does this data come from? Oh, yeah. Um, well, my programmer uh, created something where we pull all this off um, for all, all the traders in my private forum. But you can get the same data from IG Markets. Um, actually, IG Markets is not the only one. I use IG Markets. So you would just do a search for IG Markets AUD. CHF, 
or um, in this case, IG Markets CAD forward slash Swiss CAD slash CHF. And that will give you the live open position ratios updated every 10 minutes when the markets are open for the CAD Swiss. Okay, so you can definitely get these data. I have just had my programmer kind of create a page where he peels it all from those websites. The reason why I like IG Markets is two reasons. You can get it from Saxo Bank. You can get it from Awanda if you have an account. I think you can even get it from, um, uh, what's that site called where you can like sign up to, to trade someone's robot, <laughs> subscribe to someone's robot or MyFX Book I think has it. There's lots of, so Saxo Bank has it. IG Markets has it and Awanda has it. Just search um, the, the, the pair and IG Markets and it will come up for you. All right. I like IG Markets because they have lots of traders, tons of traders trade with them. So there's a good chunk of the retail market. And also they have a huge variety of pairs that offer um, uh, that where they offer the open position ratios. A lot of brokers like Saxo and Awanda don't have that many pairs. So IG has a lot of pairs, and I like to trade the weird pairs like the pound New Zealand and stuff like that. So, All right, so let's move on to number two. Number two method is, actually I'll show you. I've got a trade set up right now on, on number two, and this one is the Singapore dollar. Okay, Singapore dollar has a big box right here, all right, as I see it. And that box has the low down here, the high up here, and if it gets back up here again to 35.25, I'm going to sell. So that's about 35 pips away from where we are right now. If it gets up to 35.25, I'm going to sell. I'm going to have my stop loss up here at 35.50, so I'll have 25 pips away. And I'm going to take profit all the way down here at 35.50, right? So um, those of you who are better at math than I am have worked out that it's 25 pips of risk and 75 pips of reward, right? So this is an example of a number two, which is a blind entry. So we're not waiting for a kangaroo tail or a moolah top or a whammy or a big shadow or anything like that. All I'm really trying to do is pick the really solid support resistance levels. So it needs to be a really nice area of support and resistance. So for example, uh, well, actually, the pound isn't a very good example. Let's see. Let's actually use the yen. Um, the yen is trending right now. So um, what the yen has a slight bullish bias, but very slight. So with the yen, what I might do is it have the opposite. I have a blind uh, buy entry down here at the bottom uh, where all these highs are. So I'd, I'd be buying at 109.70. I actually like to do it a little bit. Uh, beyond the level, so not 109.70, but maybe 109.65. I put my stop loss 30 pips away from that, so from 109.65 maybe to 109.35, I'd have my stop loss down there, 109.30, something like that. And then um, if it triggers and it doesn't stop me out, then I go for 3R, right? So in this case, it would be pretty far away. Um, let's see, what would 3R be? From right here, from 65... Let's say we had 35 pips of a risk. So we'd have to go 105. So it'd have to go all the way up to here. But remember, if I have a slight bullish bias, which I think is, yes, is still true. So 64% of the market is short. So I have a bullish bias for this one. It's very slight. I really like it to be over 70%. If it's over 70%, it goes blue on here. If it's over 70%, it goes red. And then if it's orange or light blue, it's, it's kind of like trending in that direction, but not quite there. So you can see the CAD Swiss and the Aussie CAD are both at 69. They're not at 70%. So in this case, um, I would put a buy order here and wait for the market to get uh, 105 pips away. So to get my 3R, or maybe 110 or whatever. Sometimes it's good to go for a little bit more than 3R because you will get slipped here and there and you want to account for that. So that's thing number two, very similar to the first setup. It's just a little bit more risky. Now, here's the thing that's great about using blind entries. While it's true, you're going to get stopped out more often. It's also true. It's easier to get a big winner. 
So when you wait for the, the kangaroo tail or the, or the moolah top or the whammy bottom or whatever, um, it's great to have that confirmation of the candle, but it's harder to eke out 3R. Whereas when you go blind, sometimes you can get really close to the turning point, especially if you pick your support and resistance levels wisely. And so what that means is you're going in with very little information about how the trade is going to work out, but that, that equals a bigger payout in the end. So um, that's one of the advantages of, of trading that way. Does that make sense? Cool. All righty. I am going to move on to number three. All righty, Andre. Thank you. So number three is um, a good example of this is the pound Swiss. Now, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just remind you that with the pound Swiss here, We've actually got 66% um, uh, of the traders are long. So that means I have a short bias. Remember, most retail traders are trying to, to sell in an uptrend and buy in a downtrend. They're trying to find the turning point. Um, and so I have a, a slight bearish bias for my pound Swiss. So uh, what we have here is a box for the pound Swiss. We have a couple of touches up here at the top, one, two, and a couple of touches down here at the bottom, one, two. But what you'll notice, probably which stands out like a sore thumb, is that we actually have, which is why I picked this example to make it really obvious, but what we have here in this is a really lovely um, midpoint, okay? Now, it's not always going to be the case that you have a really lovely midpoint, a really obvious midpoint. And it's not exactly the midpoint, but it's the point in the middle of the of the box where you get a lot of bounces. So you can use this. And here's how I would use this on the pound Swiss. First of all, I know that I really only want to trade the pound Swiss right now one way. And that one way would be to sell it. So let's say, for argument's sake, that over the next couple of days, or maybe even tonight, let's say today, I know it's tonight for me because I'm in Asia and I know most of you are in Europe, but um, for me, it's it's nighttime. It's, right? it's 9, 9 o'clock right now, 9.20. So um, let's say that sometime you know, in the next couple of hours, we break through this midpoint and we start chugging higher. And then by tomorrow, we actually tag the top of this box at 1.2850 on the pound Swiss. Well, if that's the case... I can sell with a confirmation candle or not. Uh, probably be easier to do it without a confirmation candle. And I can target the midpoint of the box. Now again, this is gonna be for like traders who like to really, you know, trade the one hour or two hour charts or something, you know, 30 minute charts, something like that. And what you're doing is you're picking your your spots by looking at the six hour charts or, or four hour, or eight hour, whatever, but you're getting in on the lower time frame and you're using the midpoint of the box as a target. Sometimes it takes a long time before the market will push through the midpoint of a consolidation box. It can be really stressful. And if you're paying swap the whole time or whatever, it can be a little bit annoying. So let's say for example, that I had sold up here if I had sold up here and I had my target, for whatever reason, I had my target down here. I had support and resistance. Actually, there's a really good reason. If you go back, you'll see um, that's where it bounced right there. So it broke through and bounced off this level. Anyway, let's say I had that, that, that spot as my target. Guess what? I would have been waiting forever because it went down and took one, two, three. Finally, it broke through that midpoint. So... That would have been a really difficult thing to deal with, knowing that I'm not going to make any profit until it gets all the way down to the other side of, the, of, of this, where the support level is. Um, at that point, I wouldn't have really called it a box. But um, if, I had, if I had enough R available at the midpoint here, where we already had established there was at least a double bottom here, um, that would have made sense. So that's one way that you can do it too, is you can use the higher time frames to find your support and resistance levels, but then maybe use a lower time frame chart uh, to get in 
so that it makes sense with a really tight stop so it makes sense uh, to get out the midpoint and it's really good if you if you find yourself lacking the patience uh, you know waiting for it to get to the other side of the box because it often will reverse around the middle of the box where the wherever that midpoint is and, and for those of you that have read naked forex you know that the midpoint of the box is really important when it comes to last kiss trades right that's where we put our emergency stop but in this case um, it can actually be a target so that makes sense so that's number three which is you know aiming for the midpoint all right okay Let's move on to numero cuatro, of course, and that, for that one, I think we should use the gold chart. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw fancy schmancy looking lines. I'm going to talk about one thing that may make sense here on the gold chart. Okay, so... Here on the gold chart, uh, I've got a bullish bias. There's a lot of people uh, selling gold short, right? So I've got a bullish bias, let's say, and uh, I, I go, okay, uh, where am I going to get in? Well, there's, there's a couple of places that I could get in. One would be just to wait for the the market to fall back down to the to the bottom of this channel and buy off of there just like as soon as it touches there i put my order in don't even wait for the the uh, kangaroo tail or the double bottom or whatever another thing i could do is kind of tee up a really good spot which would be where the intersection of my channel and my horizontal support resistance is which happens to be 1515 right here this is the intersection of my channel and my support and resistance. The support and resistance goes back all the way back to October, September. We had lots of touches back there. It's a really solid level. It even came into play here on the way up. So that makes a lot of sense, uh, playing the, uh, the bottom of the channel there. The other thing is that the market seems to be in a bullish trend, and it's just kind of making like a big, wide, bullish flag right now, and it's eventually going to break out. So it makes a lot of sense to place an order down here where we have both the horizontal, the people who trade the horizontal levels, they're going to know to buy here. And there's, gonna, there's definitely going to be some buyers coming in there. And the people who are trading these trend lines, this, this channel here, they're also going to come in here and buy. So that's another way to do it is to trade your consolidation flags. It could be a bearish flag or a bullish flag, doesn't matter, off of the intersection points, which are really kind of the the uh, the flash points for the market. This is where you really want to uh, take advantage of the of the bounce there or the likely bounce. It's not it's not a, it's not always going to happen, but sometimes it does. And I just want to show you something. What do you notice about this? This spot right here. That touch right there. This is all the way back in September, September twenty fourth. Look look what happened. It bounced really hard off there, didn't it? So that not only is our channel, but it's also that horizontal level. So we may get another one down here. So that's another way. That's the fourth way to trade is to trade on bounces on these flags uh, that intersect with horizontal support and resistance. So you got lots of reasons to go in there. All right. If there are any questions about that, we're going to move on to the next one. All right. The next one we have here is a daily chart as it turns out and this daily chart is the euro swiss now um this is kind of cheating because it's not uh it's not really it's trending consolidations but it's trending the end of the consolidation okay so if i look at my open position ratios what i can say about the euro swiss is something pretty obvious and that obvious thing i can say is that the Euro Swiss is bearish. 84% of our traders here, 84% are going long the Euro Swiss. Now let me show you that Euro Swiss chart again. Does this look like an uptrend to you? <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> Not really at all. Uh, so because we don't have an uptrend here, 
um, obviously everyone's going long. And, and, and when I say everyone, I'm talking about the retail world, which is a very small percentage, I don't know, one to 3%, depending on who you ask, of the currency market. But what's happening here is uh, they're buying, so I know this is in a downtrend, and it was in a box, but it's fallen out. Now, here there are a couple of rules here I want to share with you. This is really interesting, um, this method. And it's a new one for me, too. I, it wasn't in Naked Forks. I haven't talked about it much, but I want to share with you how it works. Basically, you need a couple of numbers. You need um, the, the width of the box. So the width of the box in pips. So what I would say is in for this box in pips, it's approximately 230 pips, okay? 230 pips. Now, now I need to know what a third of that is. What's a third of that? Third of the box. In this case, it's it's right under 80 pips. It's about uh, you know 70. We'll call it 75 pips. Okay, is a third of the box. So what we're waiting for here is we're waiting for the market to create a consolidation box like it has here on the Euro Swiss Daily. Then we wait and we have a touch here. We have a touch there. We got one there, so we know where the top of the box is. We got a couple here. One, two, three. Four, we know where the bottom of the box is, and then we broke out. So the question is, let's say we want to trade the breakout, but we don't want to wait for the last kiss. After all, a lot of times, the last kiss just doesn't happen, right? It just doesn't get back there. It just goes without us. So the question is, at what point do we say, you know what? It's gone without it. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have to. Just because you don't wait for a last kiss, and use the last kiss entry rules doesn't mean that you can't get in on a retrace. I always like to get in on a retrace if I'm trading a, a trending market and a breakout would, would qualify as an early trend, right? So in this case, I would say, uh, so let's just put the numbers in here so we're really clear. The width of the box in this case is 230 pips. Oops, not pipped, pips. You get the idea. And then the a third of the box is actually, uh, we'll call it 70, 75 pips, right? 75 times three is, uh, is, is uh, 225, right? If my math is correct. <laughs> so that's close enough, okay. If you wanna be, you know, really, really uh, precise, it would be like 77 pips or something like that. Anyway, the point is, um, has the market gone a third of the box outside of the box? And it turns out, and feel free to test this on your own for yourself, turns out if the market goes about uh, a third of the box outside of the box, it usually is a true breakout. And not only that, I, I now know that I can get in on a retrace, even if it doesn't end up in a last kiss signal, and I can go for the full box for my target. So here's how this would work. I say to myself, self, it looks like it's fallen through the floor here. We had a kangaroo tail here and it did not hold, it broke through that. And now we see a bit of a, a retracement, so I can actually see how far did this go out of the box. And as it turns out, from the bottom of the box to the bottom down here, it went 90 pips, 95 pips, something like that. So if it went 95 pips, uh, that's definitely s s more than 75 pips. It's, it's gone definitely more than uh, a third of the box. So I would have to call this a true breakout. So what can I do? Well, I can actually get in on a retrace here. Now, I don't know if today is going to uh, be the end of the retrace. and Maybe it'll retrace again tomorrow and go a little bit higher. But what I can do is I can get in somewhere where I think it makes a lot of sense. I might use a four hour or an eight hour uh, candle or something like that. This to me is not a good entry candle, so I wouldn't do it here. But um, if it retraces here and gives like a four hour kangaroo tail or something like that, I can get in now because we've already moved 75 pips out of the box 
and I can go for the, the full 230. So here's how that would look. You know, I'm going to go back to daily here because I don't want to. Uh, yeah. Here we go. So from here, here, we'll go like this. 230 from here works out to be right about here. 105.95, so there you have it. So 105.95, so right around there would be my target. So all I have to do now, I know where my target is, I know what my direction is, and oh yeah, by the way, I also have a bias because I know that 84% of the retail traders at IG Markets are long this pair, so it's definitely in a down move. A really strong one at that, at that okay, you know, you know, really, really, really nice one. So now what I want to do is just fine tune my entry here, find a really nice, you know, four hour or one hour exhaustion candle, get in. I could put my stop on the other side of this, uh, this box or above this swing high here, whichever one makes sense. And I can go for the full 230 from here. So let's say that we get, um, like a one hour signal. Let me just, uh, Go like this so you guys can see it. Let's say we get like a one hour signal right here, okay? Get a one hour signal right here. So I go, all right, fine. I'm gonna put my um, my stop loss I get a signal right here. I'm gonna put my stop loss up here. So I got 70 pips of risk to make Oh, I might have to, I might have, I might go 60 pips of risk, 60 pips of risk, and it just a little bit into the box, 60 pips of risk to make my full 180 down here, or 190, all the way down here at 105.95. So that's how that would work. Remember, I'm waiting for a couple of things. I'm waiting for uh, a, a clear direction, which I, I use the open position ratios for that. Uh, my data is shown over and over again. That's a very good. Not perfect, but a very good indicator of the strength of trend. And you can also use it to, you know, is the market going to break through a support or resistance level? If the numbers are really strong, it probably would. And it did. This did actually break through this support level. Uh, and then I wait for a pullback. I get in on a very tight entry on a lower time frame. And I go for the full box target down here. But only after the market moves one third of the box outside of the box. Any questions about that? Just want to make sure everyone's really clear on that because it's a pretty cool strategy. I would encourage you to test it. If you like breakouts, this is a great one to test. Pretty, pretty cool. Yes, that's a good point. Um, Andre says, you know, the box level uh, could become the new midpoint. That is true. It could definitely become the new midpoint. That is absolutely true that it could become the new midpoint. Yep. One, one thing that I like to do is if I see the market is, uh, if the market is going hard, and it, it's it's running into a level. I assume it's going to blow through that level if it's uh, you know if the numbers are really strong. So I'll give you an example. Let's take a look at uh, Aussie Kiwi. Okay, Aussie Kiwi is a good example. So the Aussie Kiwi right now, like we know, the Aussie Kiwi is at. This level right here. All right, so there's two things I can do here. One is I can use this really strong level of support and resistance here to put a blind entry in and to sell. Because I have a bearish bias, guys, just, just like I did in Singapore, I could put a blind entry to sell right there. The other thing I could do is say, well, you know, we're actually on support here. Uh, you know, we had some support come in here and here and and there and now we're here again. We're just sitting here. Is it likely to break through this level and fall down to the next one? Well, the answer is yeah. The longer it sits on support here, 
with these really bearish numbers, the more likely it is to fall and come all the way down here. So yeah, it's very likely. And so um, either way, if I if I sell here on a break, say of this of this little swing low here. Or if I sell up here with a blind entry, if it spikes into this level, um, either one of these would make sense in terms in terms of like a you know a trade uh, trading this this consolidation range. I don't like to trade you know the top of a consolidation range unless it's the very tippy top. Like I wouldn't trade off of these highs or the high these highs. I always like to trade at the extreme high, and I and what that means is I'll, I'll often miss some. I'll give you an example. I missed one. On the um, on uh, the the Aussie Swiss, so I was waiting for the Aussie Swiss to get up here where this high was, and it didn't. It only it only made this high, which was 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 basically equal to this high over here, uh, and then and then it fell. Um, so I I wasn't able to, and she, you can see my my this is my target. My target was actually kind of the midpoint of this box. And I could afford to do that because my uh, my stop loss was going to be tight enough. I would have had a 30 pip stop loss, so I would have been able to get down here. It just never triggered. It never got up there. Now we're kind of on the outside of the box. So what can we use now? We can use that other strategy we just talked about, the fifth strategy, which is if the if it goes a third of the length of the box, the box is 200 pips. So if it goes uh, uh, you know, 35 pips or whatever, then I can say, all right, that's it. It's, it's gone. It's broken. It's, it's going to keep going. Most likely it's going to keep going. And it ha actually it has, it has gone about 40 pips. So we would actually expect this to fall the full 200 pips. So that would put us 64, 61. That support would come in here. Any charts that you guys want to have a look at? So that would be the target down there. Any charts that you guys want to have a look at while we're here? Happy to do so. Cool. Yeah, so, um, so for my trading right now this week, uh, what I'm hoping to do is get that Singapore dollar trade. Hopefully, it'll get up there and trigger that. I'm also looking for uh, reasons to sell the USD Swissy and buy the Swiss yen. I've taken a few Swiss yen buys uh, last week, and uh, those were great. And now I'm I'm looking to get in on the pullback. So I'll show you. Uh, the Swissy is pulling back right now and retracing, like a lot of these pairs are. We're kind of in pullback mode, but um, I'll, I'll be looking for an exhaustion, a, a reason to sell the dollar Swiss, and look, a re looking for a reason to buy the Swiss yen. Swiss yen looks uh, like it may find support down here. We'll see. A double bottom would be good. Yeah, a double bottom would be good. You know, the single touches are quite rare. Um, they're more common on the higher time frames, like the the weekly or whatever. But if uh, I if I had to choose, um, you know, if I'm waiting for confirmation, um, a touch on a support and res resistance level, double tops and double bottoms are the way to go. And I have a couple of different templates, like the Whammy, the Moolah, the Ghost Peak, the Ghost Valley, different ways of doing that. But for me, um, because it's quite rare that you would just get the market just touch something and then just bounce away and never come back. Um, the double tops and double bottoms make a lot of sense. So that's why I like those. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll be looking for a buy uh, possibly really soon. Um, if not here, the other spot that makes sense is definitely down on top of these candles here. That's only about uh, 60 pits from where we're at right now. And then, uh, like we said, the, uh, the Swissy. A sell on the Swissy would make sense. I got to get rid of all these lines and everything here. This is kind of annoying. They're not really relevant anymore. So what would we draw here? Well, we could draw a big fat box, right? That would make sense. A 
a big box right here. Like this. Now some people would say it's a little bit tricky to draw the bottom, but actually I think that that makes a lot of sense. That box right there. So I can sell up at the top of this box on the Swissy. That would be fine. Absolutely, right there, boom. Okay, uh, and then we know that the pound Swiss is possibly gonna give, uh, as long as it stays bearish, selling there. You know, the Euro Aussie has been bullish a lot this year, but it's it hasn't really had some good charts. <laughs> Euro Aussie has been tricky, like, I know it's bullish, but I, I wouldn't really trade like, if you're gonna trade this consolidation chart, I would just buy it down here. And actually, I'd probably prefer to buy down here. Off that bounce, that bounce, and that bounce. So that would be 59.70, 1.5970, around there. Aussie Singapore is also very bearish, but we're at the bottom here of the, of the, of the, the floor, basically. And we need to see it break through and fall out. So this would be another example of that, that breakout, that fifth strategy we're talking about. That would be a pretty good uh, pair for that. So if it breaks out, it doesn't have to give a last kiss, it just has to break out. So the length of this box is what? The length of this box is approximately 200 pips. So if it goes 35 pips, then we're going, yep, that's, that's a breakout. And then I, I wait for the pullback. All right, cool. Ah, Euro says, oh yeah, no problem. We'll take a look at the Euro. So I, I don't really, like, the thing about the Euro right now is it's a 50-50 market. What I mean by that is, um, uh, well, it's 60-40, but basically, uh, there isn't a directional bias on the euro. So this would be one of those markets where it makes sense to just trade the support and resistance levels. So possibly buying down here at 109.90 and selling uh, selling up here at 112.40. So those would be the plays, I think. Double top at 112.40, double bottom down at 109.95. Because we know the buyers are going to come in down here. We, we know we've seen this spike here. Uh, this spike actually is the reason why I always put my orders a little bit lower. If I'm having a, if I'm entering a blind entry here, I always put my orders a little bit lower than the, than the actual level. Or a little bit higher if I'm going to sell up here. So I know that this peaked out here at 112.38. So I might put my order at 112.45 or something like that to sell. And then to buy, it'd be 109.90, something like that. Yep, so that's all I would do here. I know that some people say this is a head and shoulders, but I say um, it's not really like a, you know, it's not like the market's been going up. It's just consolidating. Another, another way to look at the euro would be um, to trade the trend line. So you would buy off the bounces off this trend line. So you got to bounce a bounce and this is your third bounce here so as long as we we uh, we traded higher than the previous candle here you would go long right and you could go long all the way up to here that's another way to do it cool all right um, yeah no problem, Andre. No problemo. I just wanted to uh, give you guys a, a nice flavor of what these are like. Go ahead and test them for yourself. Hopefully, one of these makes really, really good sense to you. Um, it's pretty fun to uh, trade, like to have all these orders sitting in where you're anticipating where the market's going to go. You know, using the blind entries. Uh, the lower the lower win rate can be discouraging, but uh, when you do hit them, the the reward risk ratio can be really good. It's not it's not hard to get a five to one. Like if you're if you if you have a well placed stop, a well placed entry, it really isn't that difficult to to pull off a five to one. So it can, can definitely happen. 
All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for spending time here today. I really appreciate it. We'll catch you at the, the next Naked Trading webinar. I wish you very happy trading. Take care of yourself and have fun out there. We'll see you soon. Okay? Take care. Bye. See ya. Bye.